Hello guys and welcome to this new video. In this one we are looking deeper into cleanup techniques. I've already talked about this in the past but I'm going to go uh, deeper and explain everything in details. Just a little bit of a premise, I'm not going to do the degrain regrain workflow in this case and that's because the footage that I have downloaded from Pexels is heavily compressed so there's really no grain that I have to deal with. But remember that if you're doing these kind of techniques in a professional environment you will want to degrain regrain your footage. All right, so let's say that we have this footage here and let's say that we want to uh, remove the girl walking and her shadow as well and or, or all of her trails. Um, you could do this in a few ways, but I think the uh, far better way to do this is using camera tracking and projections. All right, so um, I'm going to show you uh, how I would do it nowadays. So that would mean using Synthize as my primary camera tracker. And then I'm going to do the same using only Fusion. All right, so let's move into Synthize and load the shot. Uh, this is it. I don't know much about the shot, so I'm leaving everything uh, as default and let Synthize figure out everything. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is move into the Roto Masking tab and I want to draw a rectangle around the sky because there is a fair bit of noise that I don't want uh, Synthize to pick up. And then I'm going to uh, draw a shape around the girl. All I have to do now is basically, you know, move the shape around. Okay, let's go to the last frame and then I want to move in between. So halfway through, move the shape, halfway through, move the shape. I think that's going to do it. All right, so next step, move to the Fisher tab. I want to click on the advanced settings and I want the maximum tracker count to be, let's say 800. You know, we have 300 frames roughly. I want um, double the amount of trackers for the frame length. So I would say 800 is going to be okay. And then all I want to do is go back to the summary and I just want to run the auto tracker. Pretty fast. So we have a 0.4 error. I now want to change the solver to refine. I want to enable the lens distortion calculation. And then I want to run my cleanup trackers. And I want to run my solver again. All right, so now we have 0.3 error, which is awesome. Um, all right, I, I may want to uh, reorient the scene a little bit and for that I'm going to move into 3D tab. And I want to select whole and, you know, just basically move the scene around. And then I want to create a 3D plane. Yeah, something like that. All right, so I want to again click hole, right click in the viewer, select 3D, hole effect meshes. This way the geometry will stay still and I can move my scene around. Because you know, I want to line that up a little bit better. I say, I would say this is okay. There's something else that I want to check. So, uncheck hole here. I want to select a bunch of trackers. Oops. And I want to make them white so I can see them. Uh, right, let's have a look at where they sit. And as you can see, they are a little bit below the 
ground plane that I just set in my scene and you can see that in here as well so what I want to do is to basically again click hole and just basically move everything a little bit so that those trackers sit uh, roughly on the ground plane and that's it let me just move this a little bit better yeah something like that that's perfect all right so there is one more step that i want to take care of for that i would need to change this view into perspective b and i want to orbit around in my scene so that i have this kind of view all right so now i want to select a bunch of trackers something like that looks good and in here i want to here in the toolbar i want to select mesh and in the mesh toolbar i want to convert to mesh and right now uh, what i can do since i moved my camera i can triangulate and so that i can create these um, this mesh right here remember that synthize uh, use the point of view in your perspective view when you tr you triangulate all right so what we have to do right now the last thing that we have to do is to go into the lens tab and run the lens workflow select ready started click ok and then we can move back to fusion desert comp save that's all looking good and i'm just hitting ok all right so now i can uh, close synthize and i can move back to fusion and i can go open <coughs> and select the uh, comp that synthize has created for me uh, i want to remove my default light because i don't need that and i can also you know switch off the um, point cloud you know want my uh, 3d plane in, in here and my trackers mesh in there let's have a look at our scene in 3d and as you can see we have both geometries right there and all right so right now what i want to do is go into the camera uh, unlock the camera go into image and disable the image plane and into projection i want to enable the camera projection and select the projection mode as texture all right so uh, what I want to do right now is to create a catcher and hook that up into the image plane. Let me disable this one for the moment and what I can do, I can go back to the camera render and instead of OpenGL render I can choose UV render. I don't need lighting and shadows but I do need at least 16 bit float for the maximum depth. Let me scrub through this. As you can see, everything stays still here on the road where we placed our ground plane. But everywhere else, like in the sand here, you can see everything is moving. And that's not because our camera track is not good enough. It's perfect. That's because that ground plane is not even. That's why we have created this other mesh here let me create a copy of this catcher disable this one and enable this one and let's look through the render what's going on nothing appears and that's for a reason because you know this mesh doesn't have proper uvs luckily we can add uvs in fusion and for that i'm going to need a uv map 3d in the UV map 3D, all I have to do is leave the map mode to planner and the orientation should be set to Y. And all I have to do is to hit fit. 
so now I want to add a replace material and I want to add the uh, catcher to the replace material and now if I look through the camera render as you can see everything is looking correct if I scrub through this we don't have any more uh, weird movement on the sand because we have created that geometry all right so what we want to do is to uh, split everything into two branches I might want to create another Match 3D in here, something like that. And I do want one 3D render each. So one is going to be in here and the other one is going to be here. All right. Uh, one thing that we want to do is probably if you have access to it, you may, you may want to remove this uh, custom tool and add an ST mapper. It's going to be faster, that's why. And you want to set the tiling to transparent and the match render to 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. Reload. And that's it. All right, so uh, I want to copy that ST mapper in here as well. All right, so now that we start working we want to convert our flow into linear and i'm going to use a gamut node for that in the gamut node i want to uh, in the source space i want to remove the srgb gamma and i may want to activate an as an srgb viewer lot as well right in the camera render again i want to go to uh, uv render and I want the maximum texture depth to be 16 bit float. All right, I don't really need all of this from the image plane. I may want to, uh, you know, scale the X. And most of all, I want to scale the Y. Like so that looks good um, and what I want to do now is to add a couple of uh, freeze frames I'm going to use the time hold which is a fuse uh, by Peter van Houten you can find this on Wisakles. just type in time hold and you will find this so the first one is going to say a uh, frame uh, 1001 I want to change the other one, the second one, to maybe frame 170, I would say. All right, so this one, let's do something like this. This one goes on top of the other one. Hello, all I want to do is to add a polygon mask. And I want to, you know, grab this whole thing here that should do basically and I maybe want to just add a little bit of soft edge in here and that's it now for this part I want to add a brightness contrast just for ease and add a polygon and I want to create a rough mask around the area that I want to keep I'm going to use the brightness contrast later but for now uh, all I'm going to do is to multiply by the mask and maybe add a touch of soft edge here as well and now uh, it's all a matter of copying this uh, 3d plane and I may want to add a pi router in here, create another merge 3D node. And 
All right, in here I want to change the material to white. And then all I have to do is to, you know, copy this camera render. And set that one to OpenGL render. I don't need lighting and shadow, but most importantly, I don't need any anti-aliasing in here. Just think about that. Remember about that. And 60 bin float is going to be okay. The height and width is correctly set. Um, Synthize is setting this uh, width and height value by by himself and is doing that to accommodate for the lens distortion. All right, so that's okay for for this part. Let me just you know remove this from our selection and remove the polygon polyline animation which goes I don't need that all right so um, let's start in this other branch right here and going to go OpenGL UV render as well as you can see I don't need this whole thing uh, again so uh, since I have this UV map 3d I can uh, you know, I can change the UV map and I can change the Z size. Let me go back to frame zero and I can move so that we have only the portion that we need and we can also you know change this since we don't need that something like this uh, all right so let's go back to one viewer okay um, the first thing that I want to do <coughs> is probably to remove the shadow. What I want to do is to create a another time hold and I want to hold the first frame. And let's, you know, let's do something like this. And I want to merge that one on top and use the a polygon mask to basically, you know, I want to select this whole portion here. Let's see how it goes. Let's move to the latest frame. I want this to move there. And let's see how much I can there that there's the hat. There's the leg. Um, the less I select, the better. I want to keep the original plate as much as possible. I would say something like this is enough. Let's probably smooth everything out right there. And I want to add a little bit of soft edge. Not that much, just a touch. All right, as you can see, we have an issue and the issue is uh, that the brightness of the image is changing. And so I want after time all to add a brightness contrast. <coughs> go back to frame one and I probably want to animate all of those parameters and then I want to match those two I would say that something like that looks good enough and I may want to add something that happens before this merge here and I want something that hides 
the feet here and the trails. So let's add a transform node. And let's add a merge node. And another polygon mask. So let's go to first frame. I just want to, you know, move everything to the side, like so. Let's move to the last frame and see if everything is covered. And I would say so. So all I have to do is to, you know, smoothen everything, remove the animation and add a touch of soft edge. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I probably see things moving, so let's remove the animation right there as well. Yeah, things are, uh, are moving a little bit. I don't think we're going to see that much, to be honest. Uh, something like this is good. I think we need to spend a little bit more time to, you know, uh, match the, the color and the brightness. So I'm going to use another brightness contrast. I need way less contrast. Yeah, that looks good, but I need to mask this out, so I'm going to use another polygon. And I want to restrict that influence around here. And I want to soften the edge quite a lot. Right, I think that works for me. All I have to do right now is to copy those two. And, you know, merge those and add a brightness contrast again pipe those into the mask and multiply by the mask and yeah that's it i would say let me just move these a little bit so that everything is covered and that's it perfect Right, so we need to copy this thing over, maybe this without the catcher. And we want to pipe in the uh, this image into the replace, ma uh, the replace material. And then we can just copy this render over here. Oh yeah, we need the camera as well. So let's move everything to the side and we can you know create another 3d merge 3d that's lo that's looking good all right so go back to the camera render and that's it all right so now what we want to do is to merge this one on top of this one and we want to apply the lens distortion calculation and then i can create a wireless node and i can bring in the original footage i can also merge data on top sorry the other way around all right so let's go to the last frame and as you can see we have a pretty good difference between our uh, patch and the and the actual and the actual 
uh, footage there so in here I can go back into this brightness contrast let's go back to the first frame and let's animate lift gamma gain and saturation let's move to the last frame and let's try to match that one I think that looks, that is looking good enough. All right, that is our cleanup done. We have a clean plate right now, so what we want to do is to add a gamut node, and we need to add the sRGB gamma back. Let's have a look at the result. Right, it's not perfect, you know, I spent like 20 minutes on it, so uh, could be perfected. But anyway, you have a pretty nice result. And you have the basics of the of how the technique works. All right, so let's do the same thing in Fusion right now. I'm not going to redo everything. All right, let's go back here. And we want to add a gamut node to remove the gamma. So remove sRGB gamma. Enable an sRGB viewer LUT. And then we basically want to add a cam tracker. Then we want to add a polygon mask. Right, that will do. Uh, we have to uh, invert this mask so that what's white is going to be calculated by the camera tracker. And let's go in the camera tracker, darken the image, preview the auto track location, and maybe set a better minimum freezer separation. And Bidirectional tracking, and we can just auto track. All right, so now we want to remove the preview auto location. Let me still have the darkened image because we don't see those tracker that well. Going to the solve tab, but we have like 6,000 tracker, we can decrease the maximum track error and we can delete those trackers and we can go back and in solve option we can enable the lens parameter and we can solve all right we have a 0 0.16 pixel error which is amazing and now what we can do is go into the export tab the 3D scene transform, we want to select unaligned, select a bunch of trackers that we want to be our ground plane. And I don't know, maybe also this one. Uh, let's do, let's be fancy here. Let's do this. We want set from selection and set from selection. We want to go back to aligned. And we want to basically export our scene. So let's have a look. Yeah, we have a pretty nice solve, and we can use the ground plane. Uh, let's make it white <coughs> and remove the wireframe. Since we have calculated the lens distortion, we can go in here and select this lower radial distortion, select this value here, create a lens distort node, and we might want to just input that value in here and select undistort. So let's see the before and after. As you can see, it's working perfectly. Uh, let's do exactly what we have done previously 
let me detach this point cloud we're using that one later and we want to add a catcher node and in the camera we want to unlock the camera remove the image plane enable the camera projection and set the projection mode to texture and lock the camera back so now if we go into our render we can see the projection and then we can proceed and adjust our uh, ground plane yeah i think that, that is it uh, we want to go back to float 16 here remember that it's important all right so we have a proper projection for the ground plane but what about the other mesh that we created in synthize is it possible to create that in fusion yes it can it could be done uh, there is a an awesome um, tutorial by statics vfx that i'm going to link in the description that explains uh, this exact uh, workflow that i'm going to show i'm just going a little bit deeper on how to use that for projection so for that we're going to use the point cloud and as you can see this is our point cloud we want to uh, use a white color and we want to make that renderable and after that we want to use a UV map 3d uh, there is something that I want to show you so instead of using fit we might want to uh, define a shape that is you know like uh, this ground plane here in terms of uh, size uh, uh, with uh, you know with our uh, UV map 3D and that could be done uh, manually using the size and the center uh, sliders uh, so that we basically define uh, where that uh, mesh is going to be created All right, so what we want to do now is add a custom vertex 3D node and, the, and in the vertex color, we want to use the PX as uh, the red vertex color, PY for green and PZ for blue. So we're basically using the position color for uh, defining the color of the vertices. Let me show you better as you can see we have been defining those let me see well, px py pz all right so now it works and yeah we are basically using the position color uh, for the vertices let me go back to white all right so now we can add a render node and we want to use a OpenGL UV render set to 32 bit float, and we may want to change the size a little bit. All right, and we want to add a clean plate. In the clean plate, we want to change to ranges and just hit fill. All right now, we want to add a shape 3D node and add displace 3d node and we're going to use this render to displace our 3d shape in the displace 3d we want to set the channel to rgb and the mode to absolute and we want to increase the subdivision of our shape to around 30 or something like that i would say we can then uh, merge the camera and copy this catcher onto the shape 3d and as you can see we have that exact same uh, mesh as the one we created in synthize so uh, there's one more thing that we have to do though because if we copy the uv render here as you can see 
it doesn't look correct at all. And that is because we are basically using these Shape 3D UVs after the displacement. And that's why it's looking wonky as it is right now. So um, I don't know if it's a bug on 18.5 but if you add another UV map 3D after the display 3D, Fusion will crash, at least on Mac. So I found that the uh, only way to work around this is to add a FBX exporter. Yeah, we want to pipe in our displaced image and we basically want to uh, view the X FBX exporter and hit render and okay, so we can now Remove the connection right there and we can file import uh, FBX scene and we can import the FBX that we have just created uh, Where is it in here shape 3d? And we can copy this UV map 3D. And we want to add a replace material and hook in the catcher. And now, if we look through the render right now, let me move to uh, UV render again. We now have proper UVs. All right, so if I scrub into this right now, as you can see, we have almost the same result as uh, the previous version done in Synthize. All right, I think this is a wrap for me. Sorry, it's been a long one. Hopefully is full of interesting information. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.